good evening, everyone. So glad to be back into the house of the Lord once again to come and worship together. Thank you to all the people who have joined us online, even today, in this evening, to worship together. We praise God for this time. And yeah, uh, I just want to remind, I, I keep reminding it to myself, and I just want to remind to all the people who are watching us, who are worshiping with us, that even when we think that God is silent, God is not silent. God is working. We, we see a lot of chaos, we see that the world is shut. But let me remind all of you that God is working for something good for all of us. And He is just, you know, going to pour out so much of this. And we, we, we just have to be ready to we just, you know, grasp it. And God is fighting for us. God is doing it, even in the silence. And we believe that we should have faith that God is sovereign over everything. So let us all just worship together and bring you know, glory and praise to His name because He deserves it. Because He deserves it. Yeah. Let us all worship and praise His name because He's worthy.
what then shall we say in the response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or deathness or danger or sword? Who can be against us at such a time? If we put our trust, if we put our faith in Jesus alone. His name is above every name. And every time we worship Him, He's the way maker. He's the way maker. Come on, let's sing this chorus all the time. He's the way maker. He's the way maker. Come on, let's sing it. Jesus. 
I pray, Father of God, that Lord Jesus, there will be no harm down to our brothers and sisters who are coming back home, Lord God. They have gone through a load, Lord Jesus. They have gone through, Father, discrimination. They have gone through a hardship, Lord God. They have gone through a sleepless night, Lord Jesus. They have gone through without food, Lord God. They have gone through so much mental torture, Lord Jesus. Lord, right now I pray, Lord God, you're covering me up, Lord God. Let your spirit protect them. Let your, let your, let your hands just protect them, Lord God. Father, we just want to surrender their life. I pray for the brothers in train, Lord God. I pray for the God. I pray for the brothers and sisters in buses, Lord God, in private vehicles, Lord God, as they travel, Father of God. If there is anyone coming by food again, Lord Jesus, I pray the Father they will give them strength. You will give them strength, Lord God. You will give them shelter, protection, Lord God. And Lord, they will reach home safely, Lord God. Safely, Lord God. I pray the Lord, none of them will be infected by the virus, Lord Jesus. On the way, Father, let your hands, let your spirit cover them, Lord God. Like the Israelites were covered by the blood, Lord God. Blood of the lake, Lord God. Let your blood cover, seal every door of the train, of the vehicles, Lord God. Seal everyone of their life, Lord. No virus will enter, Lord God. And no virus will, will, will touch them, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord God. I also want to pray right now for this. Beverly as a uh, lame for Christ. Let's pray that the body of Christ will come together as one. Denominations are being made by human, not by God. Such a time as this, there is no room or there is no, no place to blame one another. That they, they are doing this, their churches are not doing this, their association is not doing that. There is no time for this. It's time that the body of Christ should come together and hand in hand we should work together, pray together, help one another, encourage one another. We should, we should, we should help our government. We should help our administration. Many churches, many denominations are doing great things out there. I really appreciate. I also want to encourage that. Let's come together as body of Christ as one. What hands can do, eyes cannot do it. If one church is doing good, appreciate them. Don't criticize them. If one church is doing good, let's appreciate them. We cannot do what they are doing. But let's also do what we can do. And I pray that the body of Christ will come together as one. And in all this, Jesus will be glorified. Jesus will be lifted up. So let's pray. Let's pray for the denominations. Let's pray for the churches. Let's pray for, for, for all the believers that we will come together as one. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you once again. We pray, Father. We come in Jesus' name, the Father. Every believers, every churches, every associations, every denomination, Lord, will come together as one in such a time as this, Lord God. The Father, we will intercede for our name, Lord God. We will intercede for our people. We will pray for our government. We will pray for our administration. We will pray we will go and help out. We will go and reach out to the poor who are, who are needing help, Lord God. We pray the Father of God, you will Father of bring the body of Christ in such a time as this, Lord God. You will be exalted, Lord God. You will be magnified, Lord God. Your love will be manifested, Lord Jesus. Greater and greater, Lord God. The Lord Jesus, everyone who doesn't believe, Lord God, that will come to see that there is a God in Madeline, Lord Jesus. There is a God in Madeline, that Lord Jesus. You are protecting them, Lord God. The people will see the, 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 the love, the, the glory, the beauty in the body of Christ, Lord Jesus. So, Father, I pray right now, Father, every denomination, every church, as Father, will come together as one, Lord God. There will be no competition, Lord God. There will be no discrimination, no criticism, Lord God. But, Father, will come together as one, Lord God, and appreciate one another, Father. We thank you so much, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father. I pray for the pastors, Lord Jesus. I pray for the evangelists, Lord God. I pray for the prophets and teachers, Lord God. I pray for the, uh, the, the, the apostles, Lord God, who are doing their best, Father.
Father, Lord God, to feed the spiritual food to every person, Lord God. I pray, that, Father, you will help and you will protect them, Father. Lord, I also pray for our government, our, 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 our leaders, our chief ministers, Lord God, our, our frontline workers, police, uh, doctors and nurses, all the NGOs, Lord God. I pray that you will take care of them, Lord God. You will protect them, Lord God. And Father, we will come through this such a time as this, Lord God. If you are with us, who can be against us? If you are with us, Lord God, who can stop us, Lord Jesus? So, Father, we thank you. You are the way maker. You are a promise keeper. And everything that you have promised in your word, it will come true. So, Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Thanksgiving giving we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, worship team, for leading us into worship. Those who are watching online, um, I pray that tonight you're going to have an encounter. I pray that uh, um, you, will, you will have a new and different experience tonight. Uh, it's been a few months. All of us were experiencing. I'm sure all of you see that down there, you're longing to come back to the church. And when I say church, uh, I know everybody will think that, okay, uh, I am church. But when I say church, uh, I, I meant the fellowship of the believers, okay? So like, I'm sure all of you will be longing to come to the church and fellowship with one another, uh, meeting your friends, worshiping together. So uh, I'm, lo I'm sure you're longing for that. And I'm telling you, uh, very soon it's coming. Lockdown will be lifted up, and I'm sure we will be coming together and worshiping Jesus together, yeah? So, um, uh, Jesus is greater than uh, the virus, yeah? Jesus is name above every name. So, yeah, uh, don't, don't lose your heart. Uh, don't let fear overcome you, and don't let the, 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 the panicking or the depression overtake you, but uh, continue to believe in Jesus Christ. Um, Tonight we have a wonderful speaker. Um, really, really appreciate this man, uh, the, the, the humility that he carries, and the servanthood that he carries. Uh, every word that he releases, it's always filled with wisdom and anointing. Um, if you look at him, like the way he speaks, you might think he's more than 40 years, uh, but uh, he is not even. Years, okay, uh, so like uh, more than his age is so wise, so anointed. We're so honored and privileged. Uh, he uh, tonight, I just want to invite our youth evangelist of the Lighthouse Church, Adem Demo, to come and share the word of God. Yeah, so get excited. Yes. Yes. Hi, Mark. Um, yeah. Excited to be here, and I want to welcome once again everyone who is joining us. Um, before I start, you know, I want to share my excitement. Why I'm excited? One of the reasons why I'm excited tonight. Um, before that, just tell a story. You know, there was a boy, um, and. You know, who, who, who loved playing football and then um, he was not that good player but he would always come to the ground along with his father and then um, you know his hand on, on the shoulder of his father he would bring his father along with him and then he would play um, he was not that excellent I mean that, that, that good player he was always in the substitute and then uh, most of the time okay but after some time you know one day he came to the coach and said uh, coach I I cannot come tomorrow to play because my father passed away and uh, I'll have to attend the funeral. And what happened was after the funeral, after a couple of days back, he came back and then he asked the coach, he says, Coach, can I play in the front this match, this time? And the coach says, no, there are much better players than you. How, how can I allow you to play? He requested, even for some few minutes, can I just, just play? And then he somehow adjusts and then, you know, let him to play. But you know, the, the thing was that um, that evening he played his heart out. He played so well that everyone was shocked. Why? 
how could he play that much? And then even the person that was related to him was a good player was suggesting the coach, hey, you, you, you made a good decision this evening. And after the match was over, he says, the coach came and asked the boy, um, you know, how could you do that? I know, why also, you so good this evening, this match. And then he said, um, my father was blind all this time. And he said, this was the first match that his father was going to watch him play. And so he played his heart out. And the point is, um, this evening, for the first time, my parents is joining with us, along with you guys. Um, they're also on Facebook. So I'm so excited because they're watching me for the first time. And so that's why, not that they have passed away, okay? They're still alive. Just that they're in another side of the world. I mean, not another side, but in, they're in relation then. Um, my sister got to go home and then they're watching along with her. So that, that's the reason. I'm really excited. Um, whoever has joined this morning service, um, it was a beautiful time, a powerful time. Our brother Tali talks about the altar and the importance of altar. And then, you know, just so a few things really, you know, hit my heart. He talked about your altar will lead you to your destiny. And he was putting up some few questions. Where is your altar? How is your altar? How, how are you keeping your altar? Your place of worship, your place of encounter. How are you keeping it? And because I was about to speak some, somehow related with that, I was preparing to talk about resting in God. And so, yeah. Um, or I would say victory from the place of rest in the presence of God. And I want to share those things with us this evening. There's a few things that was in my heart. As believers, um, you know, we, we have this privilege and we have this invitation every single time to come back and rest in the presence of God. Whatever we go through, no matter whatever season that we have gone through, we, are, we always have this invitation to us from the Father to come and rest in His presence. Doesn't doesn't matter how much we have fallen back, doesn't matter how much we have gone dry in our life, in our spiritual life, or doesn't matter how far we have gone, His invitation is always for His sons and daughters to come back and rest in Him and to re strengthen ourselves in His presence. And that's a beautiful picture, and that's a beautiful invitation that we, all of us, we have. And everyone deserves that. Everyone is invited to that. And so I want to talk some few things about that this evening. I I I make sure that I don't and I'm not taking too long, maybe twenty to forty minutes maximum. And so I'll try to wrap up and I'll try to share, make use of the the time. Um, but when I uh, when we talk about resting, it's I'm, I'm talking about resting upon what the cross has done for us. And resting on um, on who God is. When, you know, um, when Jesus said on the cross, it is done, I want to tell every one of you that even the COVID-19 is included. Yeah. When Jesus said on the cross, it is done. It was for the thing that has happened, it is for the thing that is happening, it was for the thing that is about to happen. It was done for all. But in such a time as this, this is not the first time that we are in a human history that we are, we are facing this kind of crisis. Of course, not in this way, but human have faced crisis in so many different, different ways. And the thing is that crisis comes with two things. It will either break you or it will make you. To which one we allow, that's the point. So I want to share with every one of us that in such a time as this, it would be much beautiful if we can make use of the time and if we can go and maybe we, we, we can check ourselves where our altar is, where our resting place is, learning to go back and just sit the face of God. And another thing is, you know, Jesus was never surprised with any storm or anything that was happening. He was never surprised with any, any sickness. He was never surprised, even, even 
that was not a surprise for him. He was never surprised with whatever storm that was in his way. And, you know, Lazarus died just a couple of days back. Jesus reached and then, and he, he, he did not reach on time. But the thing is, it's not that Jesus did not care about the death of Lazarus. But the point is that he had that peace and he, he, Jesus was always in a place of rest where he was confident about what the Father can do. He was confident on who the Father is and who he is. And in that identity, in that truth, he has always walked and in that peace and in that resting place. And his heart was always in a place of rest. Um, and that's, I would say it's a, it's a, it's a gift for us from the Father. Um, one of the greatest or the great heroes of faith and, and the greatest apologies of this generation, Rabbi Zakaria, who, who passed away just a couple of days back, he said, the greatest gift a father would give to his child is his presence. The greatest gift a father would give to his children is his presence. It's a gift, not just an invitation. It's a gift to us, to his children, for us to learn to rest in his presence, in his altar. But the thing is, how are we how are we, you know, making use or our responsibilities to be aware of the, of the place of rest and to learn, to learn to abide in that presence. Psalms 91 verse 1 talks about um, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. It is talking about rest. Who ever learned to rest in the presence of God? Yeah. And so we enlarge our awareness of God through rest. We, we are able to enlarge our heart of who God is only in the place of rest. As sons and daughters, our awareness of God is enlarged only in the place of rest. We are able to see the bigger picture and then the better picture of who God is, who Father is in our life, only in the place of rest. Maybe by reading books and by doing so other things, you might be able to get knowledge. But to really see the heart of God, to really see the heart of the Father, is only in the place of rest, in the place of intimacy with Him. Faith is not the result of work, or striving. Our faith is not a result of our work. Just because we have done you know, so many things for God, our faith is increased. No, it's not that. Or because we were striving for faith. But faith is more of the fruit of surrender and resting in His presence. And I, I think a couple of Sundays back, um, our pastor talked about a powerful sermon on faith versus fear. If you are, if you haven't, you know, heard the sermon, you can check out our Facebook page on the Line of Church, and then you can scroll down a couple of Sundays back and, and watch the sermon on faith versus fear. It's a powerful sermon. Our pastor talked about fear and uh, things about fear and things about faith and the difference between them. Then it's a powerful sermon. Just go and check out. And so, faith is a fruit. It's a fruit that grows from the place of rest. And so, yeah, Jesus, um, let's go to um, Matthew 14, verse, uh, I'll read for every one of us. There we can see a beautiful encounter between Peter and Jesus and his 
and his disciples, but specifically women Peter and Jesus, where we have heard about the story where Peter walked on water. And it says in, in 24, I will not read the whole thing, but I will start from there. It says, And the boat was already a considerable distance from land. By the way, because the wind was against it, shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost. They said and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. Then Peter got down off the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand, caught him, and Jesus said, You of little faith, he said, Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Here's a beautiful picture of Jesus teaching Peter to focus in him. And, and the point is, Peter did not just simply walk on water because Jesus asked him to walk on water. But because his eyes was fixed on Jesus. But when his eyes was taken away from Jesus, when he, he was distracted with the storm that was around him, he fell down. And that's the picture where we can see when Peter would walk because his eyes was focused on Jesus. And that's where I believe Jesus telling us every single time, look at me. You don't have to look around to the things that is happening around you. Just look at me. One of, one of the writers says, is like this. In one of his books, he says, he, watch, or he watches the watch of those who watch the Lord. I'll say it again. He watches the watch of those who watch the Lord. If you are a person, if we as sons and daughters, if we learn to watch our focus is on Jesus then the meaning is don't worry if only your focus is on him he will take care of the rest he will take care of your watch he will take care of your time he will take care of whatever things that are going on around you that's the point he will watch the watch of those who watch the Lord it doesn't matter whatever things that are going on around you what kind of storm what kind of panic For us, the invitation is to come and rest. Not only in good times, but even in bad times. Even in a, when we are in a place of disappointment, in a place of fear, the invitation is always the same. To come and rest. To come and rest. To come and just reflect and just to, to, just to focus, to gaze upon who Jesus is. Amen. And one word from God is more powerful than thousands good words from good intended friends. Since we are in a season, in this kind of pandemic, I was speaking related to that. It doesn't matter how many people, maybe many people might come and encourage you not to fear, not to be afraid of. Maybe thousands of people might come and speak positive to you. But even more than that, what I want to say, one word from God can be more powerful than all this encouragement. Amen. One word from God. If you can learn to spend time, if you can learn to rest, only rest in His presence. When I say rest, I'm not just talking about you know, just lying down and resting. You might be working, you might be doing whatever you are called to do. But I'm talking about your heart keeping in a place where you are connected with God, where you are confident on who Jesus is. Where your heart is focused on Jesus, Amen. where your heart is so much in, in, in connecting with Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not just, of course, you can do rest thing, even physically, but I'm talking about your heart keeping in a place of rest, in a place of peace, in 
in a place of trust to who Jesus is, to what Jesus has done. That's what I'm talking about, resting in Him. You know, when we go going around, you know, doing so many things, busy with your work, but you can still keep your heart in rest. You can still keep your heart in His peace. And so nothing like just hearing from the heart of our Father. And that's, we hear from Him only in the place of resting, in the place of altar, when we bring our worship to Him, when we bring our surrender to Him, when our heart is just surrendered to Him. And you can never rest with fear in your heart. A man who has fear in his heart can never rest. Doesn't matter how hard he tries, he can never rest with fear. Because fear and rest cannot be done at the same time. If you have fear or if you have rest. The virus can kill your body, your physical body. Whatever that is happening right now. But fear can kill your spirit. Fear kills your spirit. And so I think we should be more aware on checking on where our heart is. Whatever we are going through, whatever crisis and pandemic that we are going through, this is not going to be eternal. It has come and it will go away. Like I've said before, crisis comes. Many crises have come and gone. Many war have come and gone. But the thing is, what would you allow to grow in your heart in this kind of season? What fruit would you bear? What fruit would you allow to bear? What fruit you would keep in you in, for yourself? So it would either break you or it would either make you. I want to encourage every one of you. Let this time, let this season allow to make you better, much better than ever before. Every one of us, many people, we have been hearing that, okay, I miss those old days, I miss those couple of months back. I want to be, you know, though there were people who don't want to go to school or don't want to go to college or maybe office or things, whatever we have been doing. Maybe there were so many things that we didn't want to do, we were lazy about or we were fed up of doing it, but now everyone's missing the same old thing. We are wishing that I wish we, I can go out and work again or do something again. But I would encourage you, why don't we look forward? Instead of missing the old thing, the old experience, maybe in this kind of time, in such a time as this, why don't we just check out what we have been doing and if there are things that needed to be changed can we look forward to change not simply missing the old experience but let this time be a time where we readjust our life we readjust the things that we have been doing and so we are you know let's look forward with that excitement because the time that we are living in it, it has come and that we are living on it and it will go it will pass by we will experience another good times, another breakthrough, another miracles. But how are we letting you, how are you letting this time go past time? What are you taking out of it? That's a question for every one of us. Embracing fear is rejecting love. The true love comes above fear. Do not fear, you know, in the Bible, more than 365 times. Do not fear, not to be afraid. The word is mentioned more than 365 times in the Bible. Something to think about. Fear is never from the Lord. I, I'm almost coming to an end with some few points. 
Fear is never from the Lord. And the first place where fear started was in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve. Everyone of us have heard the story. And then, and they had the fruit, and then the moment they had the fruit, what happened was they felt naked, and the next was it, and they were afraid. They felt naked of who they are, who they were. They felt insecure of the perfect creation of God, and the next thing was their heart was filled with fear. That fear was never from the Lord. But the beautiful picture we can see here is they, they, they feel so much naked, they, they will cover themselves with the, the leaf and then they were hiding. God came walking to the garden. And the next thing God asked to them was, Adam and Eve, where are you? And I don't think God was asking them, you know, their physical location was not a call for God. It was the God that God himself created. It was not a problem for him. Maybe God was not saying, oh, he's such a huge place, where can I find them? But I believe God was asking about their heart. Where are you? Where are you keeping your heart? I don't think I have given you that heart of fear. I don't think I have given you that, that feeling of nakedness, rejection. I don't think I have given you that. I believe that was what God was asking. Where are you? If they can hear the footsteps of God, then God definitely knows where they are. But he was asking these questions. Where are you? And it was about their heart. About what they were feeling in their heart. And you know the next question was, they came out and they explained what they had to explain. They say it was they start blaming, you know, Adam put on the way to Eve, Eve to the serpent. And they start saying, you know, we feel we felt naked and we were afraid when you came. But the second question God asked was, who told you? Who told you? The first question was, where are you? And I think that's the question that comes to us every single day. Where is your heart? Where are you keeping your heart? And maybe we, all of us will have our own ex, you know, explanation of why we are afraid of, why we are confused about, why we are doubting, why we are feeling rejection, why we are you know, in so much of condemnation and, and so much of this you know, complaint and everything. But God will ask again, who told you? Who told you that you were naked? Who told you that you were supposed to be afraid? Who told you that you cannot make it? Who told you? Who told you? That was the question. We know that we were created in the image of God. Perfectly created in the image of God. For us to know. The Bible says and talks about Jesus said, my sheep hears no voice. And um, even this morning, you know, Something really powerful that I've heard from our, when our brother Tali was sharing about. If you're not able to hear from the Lord, that means we have to check where our altar is. If you and I stop hearing from the Lord, I think we need to check out where our heart is here, where our place of rest is. Because there's only this promise and declaration that He should will hear the voice of the master. His children will definitely hear the voice of his father. And if we are failing to hear the voice of God, 
As I have said in the beginning, it is not a surprise for God that COVID-19 has happened. It's not that God is taking break to speak to you. Maybe this is a pandemic season I will stop speaking to you know, these people. God is not in the Corinthian. Amen. Yeah. I don't think it's very much. He can speak anytime. There's no need of much for God. There's no need, there's no, um, we have a rules. Even for the vehicle, we have odd number and, and even number is different. But I, I think God is both. The even number and normal. And then even in the extra day, like Sunday, he still goes around trying to speak to his children. We, have, we only have to tune in to where he is. Yeah. So we are, you keep in your heart. That's the question this evening I want every one of us to ask to ourselves. Where are you keeping your heart? Are your heart being entertained by the social media or whatever thing that is happening? You know, our heart, our, we are responsible for our own heart, okay? The poem in our heart has nothing to do with the other person. People say, oh, she broke my heart, I broke my heart. Oh, I'm not, I broke my heart. I not break my heart. Oh, me? But, you know, people say that she broke my heart, he broke my heart. You know, my heart is broken in pieces. But I'm telling you, if you, if someone can break your heart because you have given your heart to them. No one can break your heart until and unless you give it to them. The point is you are in charge of your heart. You are responsible for what is going on in your heart, for what happens in your heart. You are responsible. And you are responsible for where your heart is even right now. That are your heart entertained by the thing that is happening around you? By what people are saying, what people are saying, we definitely have to be aware, we should be aware of what is going on. What is happening in the world. We cannot be, you know, we cannot look ourselves somewhere and then, you know, okay, I'll just spend time with the Lord. I don't care about what is going on. That's not right. We must be updated with what is going on around the world, what is happening. We must pray for the world. We must pray for people. We must be aware of what is going on. But the thing is that many times we allow those things to overtake our faith. Many times we allow those, the news to overtake our place of rest. Whatever happened, not just this COVID-19, even death, even to a place of so much, you know, just whatever happened, you must not let those things distract our place of rest. The place of rest should always be our first priority. Definitely we go through different seasons, different times where we sometimes we are down, sometimes we are, you know, we, are, we feel fresh. But the thing is, we must always learn to come back and to be aware of our resting place in God. In Jesus. And in such a time as this, let us all be people of hope givers. Not simply, um, I think almost everyone has become um, maybe news producer or, or you know, News channel, huh? we are very much expert in giving news, but let's be a hope giver. And let's give hope to someone without judging. And when I talk about fear, of course there are people, we cannot judge for someone who is so much in fear. The reason is, why when people, there are different people who are, who are very much in, in a panic for what is happening, is they have their own reason. We don't have to judge. What we 
we only have to do is you must give hope. And the reason is, everyone they have gone through different seasons. Some of them they are afraid of this pandemic because maybe they have gone through death in their family. Maybe they have gone through different kind of sickness in their life or in their family. Maybe they have, they have lost their loved ones or they have seen different kind of this, this, those dysfunctional things happening in the family. And so maybe even this time, as they are hearing this news, maybe they are panicked. So the things you don't have to judge. Everyone will have their own reason of why they are afraid or why they are panicking. But our responsibility is to simply give hope that there is a God, that our hope is in Jesus. Just to give hope that God is still working, that there's miracles still happening, that there's hope for the whole world. That's our responsibility, to let people know, to give hope to people. And both hope and hopelessness are contagious. It is also more like this virus. It's contagious. If one start a conversation with a hopelessness, it passes on like this virus, one after the other. One person stop the flow and start giving hope, then that flow starts. The flow of hope starts. So let's make this time where we learn to give hope to people. And be the church, be the light. When Jesus came to earth, this is where I'll be ending and I'll be praying for every one of us. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He kept telling to the world that I am the light. But one beautiful thing is, you know what Jesus said before he left? Now you are the light of the world. He kept telling that I am the light. I am the church. Before he left, he said, you are the church. You are the light. You are the son of the earth. That's what Jesus said. So what are we going to do about it? What role we are supposed to play with that? And we can never be a church. Churches, we are not talking about the building. The Bible says, your heart is the temple of God. Your body is the temple of God. Which means you are the church of God. And so we cannot be church to someone. We cannot be the light to someone if we have not received the light from the light giver. And we can only receive that light from the place of rest, from the place of altar, from the place where we are confident of who Jesus is. Many times it's not easy for us because we go through different kind of seasons in life, different situations that we face. I'm not saying it's easy. But what I'm telling is, Push ourselves. Somebody says this. One pastor says this. If you don't feel like praying, then pray until you love to pray. If you don't feel like singing, if you don't feel like praising, if you don't feel like worshiping, then worship until you love to worship. Sometimes you have to push ourselves. It says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We have to. Keep, you know, pushing our flesh to agree with what the Spirit is willing. Many times it's hard for us. If you're lazy, we are distracted with so many things. But what I want to say is, push, keep doing it, doing it until you love to do. Try to rest in the presence of God until you love to rest. Until you are in love to be in that place. Just push yourself. Yeah. And so that's what it is. In such a time as this, we are called to be the light. We are called to be the church. We are called to be the hope givers. And let's be people who forward, you know, simply missing the old days, what has happened. Because I don't think the world is 
going to continue where we have extended last. It's going to start in a very new way. Everything the whole world is locked down. And everything that's the stuff of I don't think it will be the same. And so what are we going to do about it? How can we start changing it? Let's try to just readjust or just try to go back and see what things I used to do, you used to do, and readjust if there are places. Yeah? Amen. Okay. And so, let's all be still and know that God is in control. Be still and know that I am God. That's what the Bible says. So let us all be still peaceful in our heart, our heart in a place of rest, and know that He is God. Amen. Let me pray for every one of you who is joining with us. So, yeah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. I thank you this evening, and I thank you for your still good, and I thank you for your still working for our good. And I thank you. I pray for every single person joining with us even this evening, watching us from their own homes. Father, I bless every single one of them. I bless their heart, Father. And I pray for every single one of us here, Father. We pray the Lord God in such a time as this, we'll be able to rest in your presence. We'll be as sons and daughters. As sons and daughters, we'll be able to seek your heart and to seek the place of rest, to be in the place of rest and be the light to people in need of Father. So I want to thank you for this time, Father. We, we, we thank you for your presence. And we thank you for what you want to do, what you are doing, what you will be doing, Father. Yes. We thank you. We thank you for this beautiful moment. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Have a good evening. <laughs>